What's up everyone, it's Mike here from The Art of Guitar, here to show you the seven levels of Smells Like Teen Spirit. A lot of people who play this riff, they always say it's easy, like they kind of put it in the same uh, level as Smoke in the Water, Enter Sandman, uh, all those uh, riffs that people perceive as generic and very simple. What I like to do is I like to take those kind of riffs and break them down so that you guys can see there's a lot of levels to them and uh, there's different ways to play them depending on where you're at with your guitar journey, okay? So let's check out how I see a lot of people start out when they do this riff. They keep it real basic with power chords. So maybe they'll go like this. That's a cool way to start out. Like if you played Guitar Hero before, that'd be like the beginning level uh, before you moved up. And then level two would be if you wanted to start to add the scratchy sounds. And so you got to do some left hand muting, as you know. This isn't a lesson of how to play it necessarily, but just to show you the levels. But if you already know how to do palm muting, you know that you just cover the strings a little bit with your left hand. Then you get that sound. Okay, so here's what you could do now. You can go. So that's the same riff, but with the scratchies added to them. I heard somebody call it the scratchies before, so I kept calling it that. The third level is where you add a little bit of noise, and you do that with open strings. And this is kind of that uh, trashy, noisy sound that you can add to it to make it a little more interesting. So now you go like this. funny to connect the chords you just hit the open strings the fourth level is where you're going to add the upstroke finally so instead of just going we're gonna go like that now it sounds a lot more like it so level four here we go and I played it that way for a long time Sounds good, especially when you use distortion, when it kicks in. Level five is where you do what I call the Cobain chord, and that's when you take a power chord, and your ring finger just kind of bars. I don't know if it's accidental when he does it, because you never know, because his technique is so crazy. That proves to me that uh, it's a really, really important lesson, in my opinion, that having perfect technique sometimes can handcuff somebody if they're wanting to come up with something very original. So I believe because he has strange technique when it comes to power chords, he developed his own sound through that. And here's what it is, okay? If you just do a regular power chord, you get this. If you bar across, you may hit the octave, so you would get this. So that's F, C, F. But if you bar it across and you accidentally hit the next string as well, you get this sound kind of like that come as you are sound. And when you play that, it's it's just got that Nirvana tinge to it, which is really original. You know, a lot of people try not to hit that because it's a strange interval for a lot of people. It's that fourth interval that people avoid. So if you just add that in, suddenly you hear the sound, the actual essence of Smells Like Teen Spirit coming through. So this is level five. Let's add that to what we already had. See how it's actually here as well? It's in there as well. When you move over, when you're on the fifth string as your root note, it's not as drastic because now, if you accidentally hit the extra string, you're just doing a major bar chord anyway. But when you do it here, it's where it's where you really get that sound is when you start on the sixth string for your root note. Versus, that sounds okay. Okay, so that's level five. Level six is where you really start to get into how he actually does it on the album. From a lot of scrutiny, I really went in, slowed it down, listened to every detail. And this is kind of interesting because check this out first of all. There's a couple little details that bump this up to level six and here's what, what it is. Okay, so you start with that Cobain chord, right? You go. So instead of going click, 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 which is what you usually do, in the recording, if you listen carefully in the beginning, he misses the first click. So it ends up being this instead. Really listen to it and you'll see that that's what's going on. And then he moves to the next chord and goes like this. There's that open 
uh, string connection point, and then we go to the next part, and then it becomes this. There's the regular clickies, okay? And then we have... Notice there's an upstroke now as well when you go to the fifth string root note, so we have this. Like that. Then something interesting, he just goes real quick, it's like... So there's a couple little extra hits in there. Let me do that all at once now. Hear the sound of that? Now it's getting really close to the original. So I consider level 7 a bonus level, kind of like what I did with the Smoke on the Water where he was using his thumb. Well, if you watch Kurt play this live, he does uh, a very interesting thing in a few videos, and that's where he starts with an upstroke. So you might not think that makes a difference, but check this out. If you go downstroke versus an upstroke, there's a little bit of a different sound that happens with that. But the problem is, is you run into a strange feeling if you're used to correct strumming. Once again, he goes off the beaten path and creates his own style through doing this, at least live. So here's what happens when you try to do this with the upstroke being first. You get this. I don't think I could get used to that because I'm so used to having my set patterns when it comes to strumming. This feels way better to me. If you watch the original video for this, he's all down. He's like this kind of thing. Uh, and he even does that live during the chorus, a lot of downstrokes. But in the intro live, he will do this upstroke. So uh, keep an eye on that. It's little details that are kind of interesting, at least to me. Okay, so one more time with the upstrokes. does affect your rhythm as well. So there's a lot of things that just changing the direction of your picking can, uh, can affect. So watch out for that. Okay, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Seven levels of Smells Like Teen Spirit. Uh, let me know what level you guys are playing it at, and uh, let me know if you have any luck bringing it up to the higher levels, okay? And I will catch you soon with another lesson very soon. Thanks for watching, guys. See ya.